Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering woke colleges in a panic after DEI gets destroyed. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. Coming from CNN, DEI programs and universities are being cut across the country. What does this mean for higher education? From USA Today, DEI came to colleges with a bang. Now, these red states are on a mission to snuff it out. From U.S. News, DEI bans at colleges. What students should know. From the College Fix, East Carolina University completely eliminates all faculty DEI requirements. From Fox Houston, University of Houston removes diversity inclusion statements from hiring practices. From the Associated Press, Republicans vote to cut University of Wisconsin system's budget by $32 million in diversity programs spat. Yolidi Rosario Hernandez was just seven months into a job as chief diversity officer at the new College of Florida when the news came. The board of trustees announced it was dissolving the diversity, equity, and inclusion office. The news, which came in February, disappointed Rosario Hernandez, who spent those seven months busy helping students with things like counseling resources and financial literacy, while also advising the school's former president and assisting with recruitment efforts. The situation at New College, which also did not renew the contract of its only U.S. history professor last month, is not unique. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signed a bill banning public colleges and universities from spending money on diversity, equity, and inclusion in May. And similar moves are happening across the country. More than a dozen state legislatures have introduced or passed bills reining in DEI programs in colleges and universities, claiming the offices eat up valuable financial resources with little impact. Multiple states, like North Carolina and South Carolina, have introduced bills to track college DEI spending. In Virginia, Governor Glenn Youngkin banned the teaching of inherently divisive concepts in public schools and has spoken out against equity initiatives throughout his time in office. In Ohio, a controversial bill that would, among other things, abolish diversity training requirements at public colleges is also steadily moving through the state's legislative system. Even as the academic year draws to a close, these fights against diversity, equity, and inclusion are set to continue. And to some, the future of public higher education is on the line. Conservatives and normal people argue DEI is about indoctrination. Scrutiny of DEI initiatives isn't new, nor is it necessarily partisan. Conservative lawmakers and normal people have for years claimed DEI efforts are a form of indoctrination. In 2020, then-President Donald Trump called racial sensitivity trainings, quote, anti-American propaganda and issued an executive order banning such trainings for federal agencies, a move watchdogs noted as a pre-election overture to his base. On the other side of the political spectrum, there has also been critique, questioning the efficacy of tools like mandatory workplace training videos. Still, many DEI initiatives have been credited as beneficial. Studies have shown that college students exposed to more diversity have greater levels of cultural awareness and political participation. Cultural awareness and political participation. In college, you're supposed to be getting an education that then becomes marketable so you can then have some kind of a career, right? Everyone is told, go to college. If you go to college, you're going to earn more money. And then you'll be able to have a nice career. You'll have a good living. You can have a family. That's the whole purpose of going to college. Not to have more significant cultural awareness or even more political participation, meaning that if you're indoctrinated to believe in woke stuff, then you'll vote for Democrats. That's, of course, what they're talking about. Meanwhile, scholars credit DEI policies and programs as one way to combat inequality by encouraging multiculturalism and providing resources for people of different backgrounds. Does that sound like something that your state government should be spending money on? Probably not. Yet scrutiny of these initiatives placed in colleges and universities has mounted largely from conservative lawmakers. DEI has become akin to terms like critical race theory, part of a larger talking point asserting that DEI indoctrinates students and is even a form of employee discrimination 
when considered in hiring practices, which of course it is employee discrimination when it's considered in a hiring practice. You're considering only certain people of certain races to meet whatever equity quota it is. That That is discrimination by definition. Well, DEI has been perverted from the original concept, said Edwin Bueller, founder of conservative think tank, the Heritage Foundation. Instead, it's become almost an accusation of incipient racism. Fuelner is also the chairman of the Virginia Commission of Higher Education Board, a governor advisory board that evaluates appointments to the governing bodies of the state's public colleges and universities. And he's already said that reigning in diversity, equity, and inclusion is a top priority in his role on the board. The money spent on DEI programs, he told CNN, could instead be spent on student aid. But large swaths of students and faculty seem to be against these moves. In Ohio, for example, the state legislature has pushed forward a bill that not only bans diversity trainings and mandates, but also university partnerships with China and the promotion of any controversial belief or policy spanning from diversity to climate policies and marriage. Ohio State Senator Jerry Serino, the bill's sponsor, did not respond to CNN's request for comment, but in a statement posted online, Serino said the bill is meant to ensure free expression on campus and in the classroom. Critics say the bill promotes censorship. They have it exactly backwards, he wrote. The bill will allow students to exercise their right to free speech without threat of reprisal by professors or administrators. It will permit the marketplace of ideas to flourish, which is the ideal environment for any educational institution. The Inter-University Council of Ohio, which represents all 14 of the state's public universities, has expressed concern over the bill, specifically criticizing its vagueness, government overreach, and underrepresentation of DEI, calling the latter, quote, one of the most potentially important parts of the bill. Data shows DEI efforts help create an academic community that generates a higher enrollment rate, matriculation rate, and eventual success rate. DEI is for students with disabilities, veterans with PTSD, minority students, and students who are new Americans who may need extra help due to language or cultural barriers, the IUC said in a statement. DEI helps more students achieve the American dream of success via a college education. DEI, like CRT, is not something that belongs near any kinds of schools, any kinds of public institutions, anything subsidized by state, county, federal, or local funds. These are propaganda elements to push people into cultural Marxism. Very, very detrimental for everyone's personal constitutional rights and for the free marketplace of ideas. It's great to see pushback, at least in red states. Some students are also concerned about the progression of such bills. In North Carolina, state legislators recently requested an overview of documents related to DEI training from all colleges in the University of North Carolina system. They have also pushed bills aimed at DEI mandates in hiring, as well as restricting the teaching of racism in public schools. And of course, restricting the teaching of racism is all about saying, these people of this skin color, these children in school with you are not racist because of their skin color. It's a terrible thing to tell children. It's sick and it's demented and it's cultural Marxism. Well, this is about indoctrination training, said State Senator Warren Daniel, the sponsor of the bill limiting DEI mandates. Andrew Gary, a senior at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, said he's concerned about the recent pushes both in his state and across the country. Quote, they want to be able to restrict professors' ability to present information to their classes, Gary said. There's basically a push against perceived liberal bias. In Gary's experience, professors and classes are not pushing a political agenda. The overreach by politicians seems misguided, he said. Quote, I at least personally would rather have academic departments determine what our professors should be teaching us rather than state legislatures who are not experts in those subjects. The issue is not whether or not you'd want to rely on an expert, and it would be great to trust teachers and professors with our children. The problem is these people have gone sick. They're all pushing agendas on these poor students. The students don't know what to expect. The professors go in and say, let's push our new critical race theory, DEI, whatever agenda they want to push on these students 
and the students don't even get a full picture of, hey, here's a philosophy. Hey, here's another philosophy. They don't get that. They get whatever the professor's personal politics are. And thank goodness there are some states that are stepping up and saying, no, we're not going to let you continue to do this. This is a good article from the College Fix talking about how East Carolina, we were just talking about North Carolina, but how East Carolina University completely eliminated all faculty DEI requirements. They really made significant changes based on this bill being passed into a law. We need that in these colleges. This is extremely serious stuff. And that's why I do these videos. I like to alert people to problems, but at the same time, there have been a lot of successes and that's what the Woke Shutdown series is all about. Others have argued that DEI initiatives in colleges actually deserve more investment, not less. A Randy Mercedes, who just graduated from the University of Virginia, said UVA doesn't invest enough in DEI, despite what the state's conservative leaders have said. In her personal experience, Institutions are already not equipped to provide for a diverse student body. Limiting DEI further will only exacerbate the issue. Quote, the lack of DEI, whether that be from race, socioeconomic status, lived experiences, really becomes a problem, she said. The Division for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion at UVA did not respond to CNN's request for comment. The purpose of college is not for you to have your own lived experience defined by your own personal history and cultural experience. You're supposed to learn how you can be an adult, maintain a career, and build a positive life in society. It's not to pander to your own personal background. College should be a place for exploration, but also acclimation to larger society. What this means for colleges and universities. Despite opposition to anti-DEI legislation, such bills continue to be introduced, and the motivation has seemingly little to do with higher education, said Kenneth Meyer, a distinguished scholar at American University who has researched public policy and higher education. Instead, he said, it's purely political. No, Kenny, what you're doing is purely political. That's why these policies need to come from the state government to stop you from destroying the next generation. Higher education isn't a high priority issue in most states, Meyer explained. Funding has decreased dramatically over the years, and it's still not necessarily a huge budget item. Still, he said, it makes sense that it's become a strategy for the Republican Party as an issue to rally behind. Quote, it allows you to focus on a group of people that are probably perceived as privileged in some way and isolate on that. It's unusual, I would guess, for higher education to be grouped in with immigrants and others we want to demonize, but I think it's all part of the process. What a sick person. No, you just can't keep pushing your political agenda on these students, even if you really want to. You can't abuse the state. You can't abuse the state's resources. The state's resources are the people's resources. They're not to push political CRT DEI agendas. But DEI initiatives have almost no impact on what's being taught in the classroom, Meyer said. What's being taught is defined by professors. Sure, there are instructions concerning classroom atmosphere, tolerating divergent viewpoints, cultivating all sides of an issue, and keeping conversations civil, he said. None of those concepts are new. So what do these bills actually mean for public colleges and universities? The idea of consolidating DEI into a single office is relatively recent, Meyer said. If diversity and equity staff and programs are rolled back, that work will likely just get reassigned, he said, to department chairs, hiring committees, or college deans. Meyer spent 20 years teaching in Texas, a state that has already recently inched closer to a ban on DEI offices in its colleges. But in Texas, policy dictates that public universities must serve the entire state and student bodies should resemble the population of Texas. Whether there's a DEI office or not, that work must be done. Quote, the duties simply shift to somebody else to make sure this happens. Still many are concerned viewing the pushback against diversity programs and initiatives coupled with attacks on issues like reproductive rights as another battle in an ongoing culture war. So if you defend yourself, then you're fighting a culture war. If you attack the population, with your woke ideas, it's considered just normal. It's not a culture war. Being forced to fight battles with people that want to push woke agendas is not something normal people or conservatives want to do. All we want to do is just live our lives 
and have prosperity and enjoy a positive, productive society. But we do need to fight these culture wars because we're being attacked. The real impact of restricting DEI programs isn't just in higher education, Rosario Hernandez said. It's a signal of the larger regression of civil rights. It's not civil rights to push your ideas on other people. It's just not these people are deranged. Quote, it's very fearsome to hear some of the rhetoric from our state leadership and board of trustees in support of ending diversity, equity, and inclusion, Rosario Hernandez said. Quote, because behind that, in my opinion, is a white nationalist rhetoric of racism, of homophobia. That's really looking at establishing white men in the place of power versus really thinking about the community of what people really need. We need a merit-based society. It doesn't matter what people's skin color is. It doesn't matter what people's gender is or if they want to make up another gender and be that gender. You have to be productive. You have to contribute to society. Otherwise, you're damaging society. It's simple. The true domino effect of these bills is still to be determined. But one possible outcome, Rosario Hernandez noted, could be the division between more conservative states and more progressive states in terms of who can access higher education. If some schools are paying more attention to DEI initiatives and more publicly working toward fostering an inclusive environment, that could affect where some students choose to attend college. Fewer and fewer students are choosing to even enroll in college in recent years, according to data from the National Center for Education Statistics. Yes, because a lot of these college degrees are very expensive and are very worthless. They don't have a marketable value. Of course, not all college degrees, but it's very important when people go to college to understand how is that degree that you're paying for and that you're earning going to factor in to a viable financial career? Because just becoming great at feminist dance theory is not going to get you the life that you want to have. That means competition for good students will only get steeper, Meyer said. And applicants may be wary of schools in states with DEI restrictions. Quote, if I were advising Ron DeSantis, he said, I would suggest students are probably going to react the same way Disney reacted. Disney isn't doing so well with their lawsuit against Florida, and we'll see how that turns out. But according to Ken Meyer, that means they're not, he said, going to be happy. While there are colleges that are scaling back, don't expect Harvard to get reasonable and scale back anything anytime soon. I had to look at this a couple of times to really understand what it was I was actually looking at. From the college fix, at Harvard, there are 2,600 more administrators than undergraduates. 2,600 more administrators than undergrads. Harvard University employs about 1,352 full-time administrators for every 1,000 undergraduate students enrolled at the university, according to an analysis conducted by the College Fix. This is more than a 9% increase from the 2013 to 2014 school year when there were 1,240 administrators per 1,000 students. The growth in personnel at Harvard is almost entirely for non-teaching positions, including many jobs focused on advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion at the Ivy League institution, according to the analysis. Quote, American higher education burdens under a massive administrative bloat. There are now more administrators than professors, famed civil liberties attorney and Harvard alumnus Harvey Silvergate told the college fix. Silvergate has argued his alma mater is suffocating with administrators and recently ran an unsuccessful campaign to be elected to its board of overseers to help reform the bloat. His platform included the stance that the institution should dismiss 95% of the bureaucrats. Having so many administrators who I prefer to call bureaucrats adversely affects the academic culture. Administrators with little useful work to do enact speech codes with the codes enforced by kangaroo courts composed mostly of administrators. These administrators have no idea what academic freedom is, much less due process. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.